Thank you, Faith. She prayed that we would have a great day on today. Yes, and we will. So it's good to see everybody again this morning. I'm happy that everybody's okay and feeling well on today, okay? Let's go ahead and get started and let's go over a few catechisms before we begin. So let's see if we remember the first one. I'm going to ask, okay? Without showing it on the screen. So what is the chief purpose of man? Let's see if you can tell me. So just say it. What is the chief purpose of man? The chief, the chief purpose of, of man is to love, enjoy, and enjoy God forever. Awesome. Yes. The chief purpose of man is to love, glorify, and enjoy God forever. Awesome. Now we can try the second one out. This one might be a little harder. So what has God given us to teach us how to love, glorify, and enjoy him? Mm. <laughs> okay, so say it after me. God has given us his word. God has given us his Both Old and New Testament. Both Old and New Testament. As the only rule. As the only rule. To teach us how. To love, glorify, and enjoy Him. All right, good. So we'll continue to practice that one a little bit. Okay, so let's go first grade. We're going to go over our books of the Bible today. I'll show it on the screen. Okay, so first grade, we're learning the first five books of the Bible. So let's say them. Genesis. 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 Numbers. Genesis. And Deuteronomy. Good. That's your Bible. The Bible. Good. So again, Genesis. 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 Good. Now, second grade. Awesome. Second grade. Let's go over your memory scripture. Out of Philippians 4 13, it says, I can do all things through Christ. Awesome. One more time. Philippians 4.13. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Awesome. Philippians 4.13. Good job. So, awesome. So that's your memory scripture this week. And those are your books of the Bible for the week as well. We will test on those on Friday, so make sure to continue to practice those um, <clears throat> as, you know, every day you go over your books of the Bible, you know the order of them, and your memory scripture, you know how to write it correctly, okay? All right, so let's go ahead and get to our lesson. So yesterday, we discussed the first man, Adam, and the first woman, Eve. God had created Adam out of the dust, but he created Eve from the rib of Adam. Remember, God didn't want Adam to be alone. So he decided to give Adam a helpmate, which was the woman, Eve. So God had blessed them to live in a place, and it was called the Garden of Eden. And God provided everything they needed inside of this garden. They had everything they could, they could want. Remember, Adam and Eve were made perfect. Everything was holy. Everything was great for them. They had no worries, nothing. Not only that, they had a great relationship with God. Is it freezing or is it okay? It's breaking up. It's breaking up. Let me see. It looks like it. Let me fix that. Give me a second. All right. Okay, hold on. Okay, how is it now? Better. Better? Okay. All right, so did y'all hear the part when I was talking about Adam and Eve? Yes. Okay, all right. I just want to make sure. It looked like it had like a little glitch. That's why I was just making sure. Okay, so God had made Adam and Eve perfect. He had made them holy. 
and they had a relationship with God. God would come and they would be able to walk with God in the garden. Life was perfect for Adam and Eve, and that's how God intended it to be. So we also discussed God's enemy, Lucifer, the angel in heaven. Remember, Lucifer wanted to be like God. He wanted to receive worship like God as well. But we know there's only one God in heaven. There is no other God and no one can make themselves a God. So Lucifer, mm -hmm. sin was found in him and Lucifer was kicked out of heaven. So Lucifer's job is to turn people away from God. He wants people to sin. And so that's exactly what Lucifer wanted to do. He said, I see how God made Adam and Eve and how he made everything so perfect. He was like, I need to change that. And I want Adam and Eve to sin against the Lord. I want to destroy this good thing that God has made. So when God allowed Adam and Eve to live in the garden, he told them they could do whatever they wanted in the garden. But one thing, he told them they could not touch, well, sorry, not eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. So the Lord had told them they could enjoy everything else inside of the garden except to eat from this tree. And we discussed how that should have been easy, right? But it's easy for us to say that we weren't there. But... They were, that was the only thing that God told them not to do was to eat from that tree. He says, you can enjoy everything else in the garden, but not that. And so one day, Eve was near the tree, and, the, and Satan knew this. Remember, he wanted to destroy their relationship with God. So Satan decided to enter into the serpent, the snake. He did not come as himself, but he came inside of the snake. So the snake goes up to Eve and, you know, he's like, didn't God say you couldn't touch the tree or you couldn't eat from any tree? And she's like, that's not what the Lord said, which is true. That's not what God said. God said they couldn't eat from the tree, not touch it. I mean, not eat from any tree. So she's like, no, that's not what the Lord said. He says, well, God doesn't want you to do that because he knows that you'll be just like him if you eat from the tree. And so Eve, when she heard this, she, instead of walking away from the serpent that was speaking to her, instead of saying, no, I'm going to honor God and obey God, she decides to eat from the tree. And so Eve eats the fruit that God told her not to eat. Not only did she eat, but Adam also ate as well. And they had disobeyed God. The Bible tells us that their eyes were open and now they felt sadness. They felt afraid because of everything that had happened. They felt afraid. <laughs> They felt afraid and they were sad. That was something they had never felt before. Remember, life was perfect before all of this. Everything was great before all of this. But unfortunately, you know, now that changed. So God, when he came to walk with them, they tried to hide from the Lord. And we discussed how we can't hide from God. No matter how much we try to go in the dark or Go in a secret place. God sees us everywhere. And so there was nothing they could do to hide from the Lord. And so the Lord is like, Adam, where are you? And so Adam is like, uh, Lord, we were hiding. And so God had already knew that they sinned. And, you know, they had to be punished. Remember, they were kicked out of the garden. They could not live there anymore. Adam would have to work now. He would have pain in childbirth. And the serpent had to crawl on his belly. Everybody had a punishment because of disobeying the Lord. And so he got kicked them out of the garden, and there was two angels put outside of the garden with flaming swords, and no one could enter back inside of the garden. So the Lord, though, though he had to punish them, he still showed that he loved them and he forgave them. Remember, he sacrificed the lamb for them to forgive their sins, and he also took the wool of the lamb, and he clothed them with the wool. And so that's God's, you know, his grace and his mercy that covers us and when he forgives us. And so God is still good. Even though he had to punish him, he still is a good God. Okay, so let's go ahead and continue on with our lesson today. Because Adam and Eve, they're still alive and everything. You know, God is still with them. They just now will have to live life a little differently. Okay, so although Adam and Eve could not have that relationship with God anymore, and although they didn't have, you know, the garden to live in, God still kept their promise to them. Remember, he had forgiven them, and they could have a fresh start with the Lord. It's just things wouldn't be perfect anymore. So the Lord had instructed them that now,
because they have sinned against him, they would have to seek his forgiveness. So he taught them how to sacrifice a lamb, an innocent lamb. They would have to find a lamb, perfect lamb. They would have to sacrifice the lamb, put him on an altar, and he would offer it as a sacrifice for their sins. And when the Lord would accept the offering, he would consume it with fire from heaven. And so the Lord, that's how God instructed them to get their sins forgiven. So this is from Adam and Eve, and we will see how it's passed down to everyone after them, that this is what they do in order for their sins to get forgiven. So that's what Adam and Eve had to do now on a regular basis because, they, you know, we sin every day. So the Lord wanted, that's what he required them to do. So God, though, he was still so good to Adam and Eve that he ended up blessing them with a son. He blessed them with a son. They had their first child, and they named him Cain. And they loved Cain. And not long after Cain, God blessed them with another son, and his name was Abel. So has anyone heard of Cain and Abel before the two brothers? Yes? Those are the children of Adam and Eve. So now we have the first family. We have Adam, we have Eve, and now we have their children, their two sons, Cain and Abel. So the Lord has blessed them with children and how much joy Adam and Eve had with their two sons, Cain and Abel. So you see, the Lord is still good. He blessed them with a family, with two sons, okay? So Cain and Abel were the first children born ever on the earth. And so God had, of course, instructed Adam and Eve to teach their children the way of God, to teach their children about sin. So I'm sure Adam and Eve told their sons about how life was so perfect with the Lord, and then they sinned against God and how, how they went through a lot of pain and how they had to be punished for their sins. So Adam and Eve taught their sons, Cain and Abel, about sacrificing to the Lord. They taught their sons how they were sinners, and how if they needed their sins forgiven, what to do to get their sins forgiven. They didn't want their sons to make the same mistake that they made by disobeying God. So they made sure to tell their sons to live for God and to always try to obey God all the time, right? And that's the same for us. We have to try to obey God as much as we can. Will we mess up sometimes? Yes, it's part of life. But we have to try our best when we know the decision is before us to do the right thing or to do the wrong thing. We always choose to do it right and say, I want to please God. And we have to ask the Lord to help us to please him because it's hard sometimes. But we have to say, God, give me the strength to do the right thing and to obey you, Lord. So Cain and Adam and Eve taught their sons that they should sacrifice to the Lord and to obey the Lord. Okay, so as the boys grow up, they become men. So Abel was a shepherd. He took care of the sheep. That was Abel's job. He would take care of all the sheep. <clears throat> and so, of course, a shepherd, when a lamb ran away, Abel was the one in charge to go and get it. So Abel was a shepherd. And then we have Cain. Cain, the other brother, was a farmer. He took care of the things that grew from the ground. That was his job. Abel was a shepherd, Cain was a farmer. They both did their jobs and took care of whatever it was that they had to do. So now it's time for the sons to bring their sacrifice to the Lord, okay? Because they're sinners. So it was time for them to bring their sacrifice before God so that their sins could be forgiven. So Abel gets his sacrifice. He gets a lamb, a perfect lamb without any spot, any blemish, it's a perfect lamb. Abel goes and he brings his lamb before the Lord. He brings his lamb and he sacrifices it before the Lord and the Lord accepts Abel's offering. So Abel had his sins forgiven. He accepts, God accepts the offering. He says, thank you, Abel, your sins are forgiven. So Abel did everything the right way. He's like, Lord, please forgive me. He brought his lamb and God forgave Abel's sin, right? So now we have Cain. Cain brings his offering to the Lord, but Cain did something a little different. Cain decided to bring fruits and vegetables, all the stuff that he took care of. He decided, well, I'm gonna go ahead and bring this to the Lord. Now, the problem with that is, what did God ask for, for a sacrifice? A lamb. 
a lamb, right? The Lord asked for a lamb. So Cain brought fruit and vegetables. Is that the right thing or is that the wrong thing? It's not the correct thing at all. It's not what God asked for. But Cain figured, I'm a farmer, so I guess I should be able to bring all my fruits and vegetables to the Lord. And God will accept it because I'm bringing him what I have. So Cain brought the Lord fruits and vegetables. But because that's not what God wanted, God did not accept Cain's offering. Right? Now, who is wrong? Should the Lord have accepted Cain's offering just because Cain brought it? At least he brought an offering. Or should Cain have brought the correct offering? Who, who should have done the right thing? Cain. Cain should have brought the correct offering. Right? The Lord had already said what he wanted. And when the Lord tells us something, there is no question in it. There's no trying to change it. When he says it, that's what we should do. So Cain should have brought the correct offering. So because he did not bring the right offering, Cain's offering was not accepted at all and Cain instead of saying okay God let me go and do the right thing guess what he does he gets mad he gets upset he's like why would God not accept my offering he's like I brought the Lord fruits and vegetables why would he not take that why would the Lord not accept what I brought to him so Cain is upset he's angry he's mad and then whenever he realizes that the Lord accepted Abel's offering he was even more mad but instead of Cain looking at the situation and looking at his brother Abel and how Abel brought the right thing and saying, okay, well, maybe that's what I should do. Cain decided to be angry and to stay in his anger. Then he was jealous because Abel, Abel's offering was accepted and he decided to stay in his jealousy and to stay in his anger and to stay in his sin. And he was like, I am not bringing the correct offering. If God will not accept my fruits and vegetables, then oh, well. That's not a good choice. Cain did not make a wise choice in that moment right there. He decided that he wanted to do what he wanted to do. And if God didn't want it, then oh well. So Cain is angry. And I'm sure everybody told him, Cain, just bring the right offering. That's all you have to do. It's not like God won't forgive you. That's not it. God would forgive him. He just had to come the right way. But he didn't want to. He was like, no, I'm mad. I'm angry. And so he decided to stay like that. They're like, Cain, just bring the right thing. He will accept it. Just bring the right thing. He will accept it, Cain. But instead, Cain was like, nope, nope. I'm not bringing the right thing at all. So he stayed angry. So one day, him and his brother were in the field, Cain and Abel. They were in the field. And so Abel said, Cain, if you bring that, you can go and get a little lamb. Go and get a little lamb and bring it to the Lord and sacrifice it before the Lord and God will accept it. And Cain's like, no, I will not. I won't do it. And so Cain was so angry, so mad at his brother Abel, so jealous with his brother, so jealous of his brother, that he decided in that moment that he was going to kill his brother. So he killed his brother Abel because he was mad because of his own sin. It was nothing Abel did. He tried. I'm sure, of course, he tried to say, oh, it's Abel's fault, but no, that wasn't it at all. It was all Cain, his anger, his jealousy, all of that inside of him that he did not fix. He allowed that to lead him to commit the first murder, and he killed his brother Abel. He killed his own brother. They have the same mom, same dad. Right? And he killed his brother. He struck his brother down. So that's why when we have some sin in our heart, like anger and like jealousy, we don't let that sit in our hearts. If we recognize it and we see it and we're like, okay, I'm angry right now. I'm jealous right now. It's important to take a moment and to pray. Will it be easy? No, it's not easy to do it. But whenever God shows it to us, like we're angry, we have to stop and say, Lord, help me to control my anger. God, please forgive me for being angry. God, please take this anger out of me. Anytime we feel anything in our hearts that doesn't feel right, if it's anger, if it's jealousy, if it's hatred, anything that we feel inside of us that's not something that we should feel, we have to ask God to take it out of us. We have to ask God to please help us to control it and to not have it control us. We have to ask God to forgive us as well because it's not okay to feel those things inside of our hearts. Because if we don't allow God to fix those things inside of our hearts, guess what? It will lead us to do a lot of other things. 
right? Every time a sin happens, it's because of the result of another sin. So Cain was angry. He was jealous. He didn't allow that sin, those things to be fixed in the inside of him. And guess what it led him to do? To murder his brother. So you see how now we see him being angry. We see him being jealous. And now we see him committing murder. And it's all because he did not fix what was going on inside of him. And also because he didn't bring the right offering. So he killed his brother in that moment, his only brother, that was nobody else. He murdered his brother. So Cain looked in horror and he was terrified at what he'd done, he had done. And he's like, I'm sure in that moment, he's like, oh my Lord, what did I do? But it was too late. His brother was already dead. His brother was already gone. So Cain tried to run and hide, just like his parents did whenever they sinned against the Lord in the garden. Cain did the same thing. He tried to run and he tried to hide from God so that the Lord wouldn't see him. But remember, y'all, God sees everything. So the Lord already had knew what Cain had did. He already saw what Cain had done to his brother. So Cain tried to run across the field and God said, Cain, Cain. And looking up and shielding his eyes, Cain's like, yes. God said, where is Abel, your brother? And Cain said, I don't know. So now we see him lying. Cain knows where his brother is. He just killed his brother. He knows exactly where he is. So we see how the sins are building, the anger, the jealousy, the murder, and now he's lying. And he's lying to the Lord. So you see, that's why you got to control that sin. Get, you got to ask the Lord to help you because if not, it will start to build into new things, new sins as time goes on. And so now Cain has lied to the Lord and said, I don't know where my brother is. I don't even know what you're talking about. He said, I'm not my brother's keeper. That's not my responsibility to know where my brother is. That's what he's telling the Lord. And the Lord said, Cain, what have you done? You have killed your brother Abel. And now I will have to punish you. So now Cain has to be punished. Now, didn't his parents tell him about what God did to them? And look at that. Cain is going through the same thing again. But this is why God did not want sin to happen in the first place, because that's how it happens. When the parents sin, it passes down. It's the same thing again. He tried to run. God said, I know what you've done. Now God has to punish him. So now Cain has to be punished. And so the Lord said, Cain, you must leave your home. You must leave your family. He says, from now on, you will run forever from place to place. You will never have anywhere to go. You will constantly run from one place to the next. So Cain had to leave his home and just go. He wouldn't have had a home. He was going to, you know, be running for the whole rest of, his, for the rest of his life. He was going to have to run and just go and go. Now imagine that. Would you like that kind of life? having to go from place to place to place to place, never having a place to call your home. Everyone goes home every night, right? If we leave our house, we're coming back to our house at the end of the night, right? But Cain, mm -hmm. that wouldn't have been his case. He would have had to go and run all the time. And that was his punishment. And so Cain's like, no, Lord, my punishment is so great. He's like, Lord, please, you've taken me away from my family. You've taken away from my farm. He's like, Lord, and everybody who sees me will try to kill me. And the Lord is like, no, Cain, no, they won't kill you. And so the Lord put a mark on Cain for no one to touch Cain, no one to try to take his life. But the Lord still said that he would have to run for the rest of his life. He would be a fugitive just going from place to place the rest of his life. And so Cain, he felt very guilty, but he had already committed the sin. He had already killed his brother. So it was too late for him to try to, oh, well, God, no, like there's, there's no such thing as a rewind in life, right? We can't go back. And once, so that's why whenever the, the choice comes to make the right decision, we do it. We don't choose to do the wrong thing because we're going to regret it. And we're going to say, oh, man, I shouldn't have done that. But that's why we try to do right. And it's okay if we do mess up, y'all. That's the goodness of God, his grace and his mercy. But if it happens again this time, we learn from the last time, right? And we do the right thing. So Cain, unfortunately, did not. And now he feels guilty, but it's too late. The Lord had already punished Cain. And the Lord had already told him this was his punishment. So we have the first murder that has happened. Cain, he killed his brother, Abel. So, of course, how do you think Adam and Eve felt when they find out that their son is gone? They were sad. 
But if you remember, the Lord told them that in life, they would have a lot of pain, a lot of sadness, and a lot of sorrow. And here we see it. They did have joy when they had their two sons. But now we see Adam and Eve going through sadness again, because now they lost both their sons, really. Yes, Abel is dead, but Cain had to leave, right? Cain had to leave. But again, the Lord is so good. And that's the thing. You know, sometimes we look at things and we're like, God, that is so bad. But God always shows us how he's good, even in the midst of bad. God ended up blessing Adam and Eve with another son. He did. And this son's name was Seth. And we'll talk about Seth tomorrow when we get to Enoch. But the Lord did bless them with another son. But they still had to go through the pain of losing their other two sons, Cain and Abel. So God did restore it and gave them a third son, Seth, but they lost the other two. So we see how sin, nothing good comes from sin, right? Every time somebody sins, we see a lot of problems, a lot of problems and a lot of trouble. So that means maybe we should try to stay away from sin, right? What you think? Shall we try to stay yeah. away from sin? Yeah. Yes. So we know what sin is. Is anything that goes against God, the bad things, we should try to uh, try to stay away. Like I said, we might make a mistake sometimes, but that's when we ask the Lord to forgive us. And when it happens, when the opportunity comes again, we say, I'm not going to do it this way. I'm not going to sin this time. I'm going to do it the right way. So we want to stay away from sin as much as possible. And like I said, if you feel something in your heart, some type of sin on the inside, you got to fix it right away. Because if not, it leads to other things. And we don't want our sins to continue to build. And build, and build, and build, and then we're so far in sin, it's like, oh, God, we don't want that. We want to try our hardest to live righteously and live, to live right before the Lord, okay? So that's our Bible lesson today on Cain and Abel, the first sons of Adam and Eve, and unfortunately, the sad story of Cain, you know, taking his brother's life, but we see how God, in the end, kind of restored it and gave Adam and Eve a new son who was set. And even with Cain, how the Lord marked him that nobody would touch him. Even that, the Lord could have let somebody take Cain's life, but instead, you know, he decided not to. But Cain had to run the whole life, so. Okay? How does that sound? Good? Lesson good. good? Yes. Okay, so tomorrow we will continue